the protection of God's holy angels. That's what we're talking about today here in Deep Creek Conservation Park. This is Theology Outdoors. Hey, here we are in Deep Creek Conservation Park and I've packed up camp for the morning, heading off on a reasonable hike today, all kitted up and ready to go. And the topic that we're talking about today on this segment of Theology Outdoors is the protection of God's holy angels, that God sends his angels to keep watch over, to guard his people. There's a wonderful promise in Psalm 91 where the Lord says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Let's think a bit more about that promise today and the wonderful thing that it is that God's protection comes by means of his holy angels. So we have this promise in Psalm 91 and other places in the scriptures that God will protect his people by sending his holy angels to guard them, to protect them. The angels in the scriptures are depicted as something like spiritual bodyguards for the people of God, especially in the unseen realm. Christians don't claim that we can prove the existence of angels and prove the promises of God's protection by angels purely by scientific evidence or anything like that. But it is an article of faith for Christians that we believe. And it's very interesting when you look across cultures and religions that so often you find beings something like angels. And many people have claims to experiences of protection from angels in one way or another. I want you to notice one little thing about that verse in Psalm 91. Notice how it says that they will bear you up so that you won't even dash your foot against a stone. I wonder if you ever think that perhaps your problems are too little, too insignificant for God. He couldn't possibly worry about you in your little concerns given everything there is going on in the world, let alone the universe. Well, the psalm seems to be making the point that this is exactly what God cares about. He sends his angels to protect you so that you won't even dash your foot against a stone. It seems to be pointing out a very small, a very seemingly insignificant little detail, just dashing your foot against a stone to make the point that if God sends his angels to protect you in the little things, how much more in the big things? When I hear this verse of the angels bearing us up, I have an image that comes to mind. I wonder if it works for you. It's the image of a parent teaching a little one to ride a bike for the first time without training wheels. Perhaps you've had this experience. And what does the parent do as the child is learning to ride? They they run alongside, they run along behind with their hands there, bearing the child up as it were, ready to catch them when they fall. And it can be quite hard work, can't it? Because you're bending down and it's an awkward angle and you're pushing them this way and that, but they're protecting, they're there behind, they're there alongside, bearing the child up to protect them from danger, to stop them from falling. It's something like this that is being said to us in the scriptures about the protection of God's holy angels. They will bear you up in life. They will be with you at God's command so that you don't dash your foot against a stone. Not sure if you can make out the trail there, snaking from bottom right to top left. But just heading down the hill. Hey, hey, we found the echidna just under some fence lines. 
Okay, stop for lunch now, taking a break. It's been a pretty solid morning hiking. Um, only about 5Ks or so, but lots of up and down along the coastline. So angels and that promise of angelic protection that God gives us in the scriptures. We need to dig a bit deeper now and sort of explore this promise and how it plays out in the rest of scriptures, how it plays out in people's lives. Because as I was talking before, some of you would have been thinking, well, that's all well and good to talk about the protection of God's angels and how his angels guard God's people in all their ways. But what about when it doesn't seem to happen? What about when tragedies happen and accidents happen? Where, was, where were the angels on that day? We also might wonder, well, if we have this wonderful promise of angelic protection, could this even give Christians the license to be reckless in the way that they live their lives? Trust in God, He'll always take care of us. We don't need to be responsible and live wisely in what we do. Well, what's very interesting about this promise of the protection of the angels in Psalm 91 is how it's used later on in the scriptures because it's used in a very famous place, you may remember, where the devil quotes these verses to Jesus himself in the Gospels. It's in the temptations of Jesus. And the devil says to Jesus, well, why not fling yourself off the temple? Because God has promised that the angels will protect you. And I wonder if you remember how Jesus responds at this point. He says, don't put the Lord your God to the test. It's also written, he says. Now we learn some very important things about the promise of angelic protection from this interaction as it's recorded in the Gospels. First of all, we learn that this is certainly not a license to be reckless with how we live. Christians can't take this promise and simply do whatever they want, trusting that God will protect them from situations they shouldn't allow themselves to get into in the first place. That's just not how it works. Jesus says that would be putting God to the test. So yes, trust that he will send his angels to protect you in your life, but don't let this lead you to do foolish things. But we need to dig a bit deeper still, because when we ask the question, what was Jesus actually doing as the devil tempted him? Where was Jesus heading? we know that Jesus was ultimately heading to the cross. And so when the devil tempted Jesus, saying, fling yourself off and God's angels will protect you, what was the devil up to? In all the temptations, the devil was trying to get Jesus to take a different path than the path of the cross, the path of suffering. And so another extremely important thing that we learn about this promise of angelic protection in the interaction between Jesus and the devil is that this promise that God gives us does not mean that we will never face suffering in life. It didn't mean that for Jesus. The promise stood for him too of God's angelic protection, but he knew that this did not mean he wouldn't have to suffer. That was effectively what the devil was saying. You're the son of God, you shouldn't have to suffer. And so fling yourself off this part of the temple and surely God's angels will protect you if you're really the son of God. But Jesus says, no, 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 that's not how it works. That too is putting God to the test. And so there's some mystery as to how this all plays out, how the promise of angelic protection sits side by side with the suffering we do endure in this life. But before we finish, I want to take you one more place to see how I believe this promise is finally fulfilled. And this is where all the threads are sort of brought together. But I'm going to go for a bit more of a hike first, hopefully get to my campsite for tonight this afternoon. So I'll see you down the track. I'm not sure if you can see off into the distance there, but that is Kangaroo Island. Definitely questioning some of my packing choices. It's a bit heavy on the back there today. Could have probably done with a few bits and pieces. This is part of the hiking trail, by the way, this section that I'm on. A very long hiking trail in South Australia that goes from Cape Jervis all the way up into the Flinders Ranges. There's a little section of it in Deep Creek. Well, I made it to my campsite for the night and what a beautiful 
place it is, a beautiful view from here, um, Eager, Eager Waterhole campsite in Deep Creek and way up in the background is actually Kangaroo Island. Before I set up camp though, I thought I'd um, finish off this video on the protection of God's angels because we thought about the promise that we have in Psalm 91 and elsewhere and we thought about how this doesn't mean that we can live recklessly and just expect God to get us out of any predicament we find ourselves in. It doesn't mean we won't face suffering and even tragedy in life. It's more mysterious than that how God protects us in this world. It's important to see as well, I think, where this promise, is, promise finds its fulfillment in the Bible itself, because it seems to me that it heads to a particular point. It heads to Jesus himself, to his great moment of suffering and death. It heads to the cross, like everything does in the scriptures. Do you remember at the end of the temptations? It's funny because the devil quotes G to Jesus this promise, why not throw yourself down and God's angels will protect you? And Jesus refuses to do this. But then at the end of his temptations, the angels actually do come. There's this mysterious little um, ending to the temptations where it says, and angels came and ministered to him. And then do you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is praying that uh, he will be saved from this hour, whether there can be another way? And of course, the answer is that no, this is the path that he has to take, the path to the cross the path of suffering, and then it says that an angel came and strengthened him. So here is the fulfillment of this promise in Christ. And the angel does not come to rescue Christ from his path of suffering, but in fact to strengthen him for that suffering, to strengthen him so that he can take the path laid out for him that goes to the cross which is where we find our ultimate salvation, our ultimate rescue. Not from all of the things that will happen to us in this world, but from sin, from death, from the devil, we'll find rescue unto eternal life in Christ because he is strengthened by the angels to go to the cross. Do you remember at one point he says, don't you think that I could call down 12 legions of angels to save me to Peter? But he doesn't do that. He goes to the cross. And then on the other side, in the resurrection, there are the angels announcing that he is risen from the dead. So there's a few thoughts today from Deep Creek on the protection of God's holy angels. This is Kairos Theology Outdoors. God bless you. And tune in next time for another video on the angels. Mm -hmm.